morning to everyone. Welcome to Radio Mayapur, the link to your heart. Thanks for tuning up into our radio from Mayapur, West Bengal, India. Today we are very honored to have a, a wonderful guest from Italy, from Rome. His name is uh, Fabio Giudice and he's an accomplished musician uh, who travels around the world teaching mandolin. He travels from Europe to America, Australia, Japan, Korea, everywhere in the world. And he has many people learning this ancient instrument, Italian instrument, mandolin. And so uh, I like to give a little bit of my knowledge about Mr. Fabio Giudice, who is also my friend. We know each other from when we are 15 years old. By the way, this is Ganga Das, and he's your host for today's podcast. I am also from Italy, and I was born in Napoli, but I live in Rome, and that's where I met my friend, Mr. Fabio. When we were 15 years old, we were running around the city searching for some pleasure and some truth. Finally, we came in India, and uh, in 1978, we came by road from Istanbul all the way to India, and we had uh, many wonderful experiences, and uh, unfortunately or fortunately, he had to go back to Italy where his father was a, a little ill and eventually passed away, so he went to study in a conservatory of Rome, and uh, he learned playing classical guitar. Then at one point in his life, he changed. After coming to India in Bombay, many years later, he met some people from Bollywood that wanted to engage him in playing some music, <clears throat> some music uh, for the Bollywood films, I guess. <laughs> soundtrack, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Here we are. And uh, so yeah. then he Very went back. And when he went back, he thought, well, I don't know much about my culture and my classical music of Italy. So he went to study in a conservatory and he also became an accomplished guitarist. At a certain point in his life, changed for whatever reason and start to learn to play a mandolin. So we are very glad to have him with us today in Mayapur. Uh, now we have been traveling for the last three months. His days are coming to end. Yeah. Tomorrow we are going to Kolkata and the 14th is flying back to Rome. So, Mr. Fabio, tell us a little <sighs> bit about yourself. Oh, yeah, here we are. You almost told everything is interesting <laughs> to people. <laughs> and uh, what else? What, what else? Mandolin. Yes, music. Music came into my life as a professional. As a professional and is still there as I teach in the conservatory in Italy. Now I teach mandolin. I used to teach guitar before, and now I mostly te teach mandolin. And uh, So maybe mandolin is a well-known instrument here in India too. The, uh, for sure you will know the famous Carnatic musician, Us Srinivas, the mandolin player who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. And uh, mandolin is quite famous in all Europe, all the, all the world, let me say, as uh, one kind of a mandolin. So their own variety. Of course, I personally met uh, Mr. Yu Srinivasa when he was, a, he was a child prodigy. He was only 16 years old when I was in Chennai at that time, maybe 1984 or 85, and I presented him some uh, Christian Conscious book he really much appreciated. And uh, so he was a wonderful person, very mm. sattvic, and the style he played, I would say. I never heard any, anybody playing this Carnatic style with such an instrument. Yeah, the instrument is, is uh, not so present. I... I not so active in in uh, Carnatic music, but many Western uh, instruments are coming into Carnatic, Carnatic music. Let's say um, guitar too, electric guitar, saxophone. That are not the for sure instrument of Indian traditions. 
So this is for, from the last 30 or 40 years. Nice. But let me ask you, Mr. Fabio, what, what, what attracts you to come to India? Because you came with me in 1978 and we had a wonderful journey. Mm. But then the, you came many times in India. This is the fifth time you're coming to India, a yeah, few years yeah. by, and then you come. What, what is that attract, attracts you to come back uh, to this place? Oh, yes. Yeah. If you can say in a few words, yeah, of course. Some, it's, some people say that there's the... Uh, Africa, Africa illness, Africa illness. Oh, sorry, uh, English, my English is not so perfect. Is missing some word is missing. Uh, Africa sickness. So it means you uh, you must go back there. So that's what remains in my heart since 1960, 70 when we came, and uh, from now and then I must come back to. To set up, reset myself <laughs> in a proper way, as India is really something special you can find for sure any other part of the world. But tell us, what is that speciality which is not available anywhere in the world? Is that the people, or is the places, is the temple? The food, of <laughs> the food, is the no, weather. No. <laughs> joking, joking. For sure, is is uh, approach to spiritual world. This is something really special that that India is about. So you think that India could become uh, like the enlightenment for the whole planet, something like that? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All the planet has, has its own way of searching for the religious approach, for the spiritual approach, to the spiritual approach. Every part of the world has its own way and but I, what I feel that India is really uh, the deep roots. The deep roots of India are still alive and still present throughout this whole country, throughout the whole country. Nice, wonderful. Tell us, in the last three months, you went to visit so many famous temples in South India, like Sri Ranga. Thank you. And the Balaji and uh, uh, Tirupati, and then you went to Kanchipura. So which one of these temples remains impressed in your consciousness, in your mind, as the most astounding experience? Well, so many of them. <laughs> so it's hard to say, hard to say, has any one of them had his own special mood, special mood. The, the deity are there that gives a special mood to the place. This is a goes together with the previ previous uh, answer I gave you. So spirituality is there and any place has its own special mood. Even if in the smallest village we visit these small, small uh, temples, something, I would like to say magical, <laughs> was there, was there. For sure, uh, the big temples that I never saw in my life, like Sri Rangam, was the first one, the first big one, really big I approach. Uh, still is there, the impression is amazing, is really amazing. If you never saw anything like that, I saw some picture. I didn't want to study, dig into that before coming. So I just had a quick, quick review to, to the, the places, but I want the fresh, the freshness of the impression come to me as I was there. And really, Sri Rangam uh, makes you feel like that. It's nice. Uh, to me, Sri Ranga reminds me a little bit of uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Mm. It's a similar type of structure, a temple, mm. but uh, the difference is that uh, Ranganath or Sri Rangam is alive <laughs> with the puja, with the worship, yeah. with the cleaning, with yeah. the painting, it's where a, the Angkor Wat is more or less a monument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a real town in the town, the temple. <laughs> so, and you can really imagine how it would look, look like in the at that time when it was built or at the time. So the people was living. Sometimes is. It's like a time travel as I was there, <laughs> and uh, I really imagine all that area, all that structure, fully painted, fully crowded of people, incense, and the smell, the color, the, 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 
and most of, of all the deity for sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's shift a little bit about the taste of India because you have been traveling everywhere, you're tasting so many things. <laughs> which, which food do you like the most? I mean, no, it's no, difficult no. to say because <laughs> no. I know, I understand there is so many variety and about where something will really impress you of South Indian food, what would be? Well, <clears throat> maybe what people does, don't realize is coming to India is like going to Europe in terms of uh, width, in terms of vastity of the land. So would you prefer something from the ocean of uh, uh, Spain or Portugal Ocean or something from north of Sweden, something from south of Italy or something from Hungary? So the variety is so amazing. So the similar is in India, to my opinion. So it's really impossible to answer that question. Of course. But uh, what I can say to my taste, South Indian food uh, is really, really tasteful, <laughs> <laughs> full of spices, not just hot of chili, but full of different spices that they blend in a amazing way you know the, the even if I had a little too much of rice to my <laughs> taste <laughs> okay let's shift the subject now I would like to ask you what are the people that you met which uh, remain impressing your mind that there were something very special or something astonishing or something different from the people you know <sighs> I'm sure you met some Swami <laughs> in Chennai and you no. met uh, so many devotees and but Brahmanas. I want to I want to go back for one minute and 1978 was when we came first time in India by that time uh, uh, we remember meeting Indian people uh, they they had three questions for us if you will remember yes. the first one is where you come, come from? from yes <laughs> the second one was are you married <laughs> and the third one was what's, what's your, your occupation, occupation? <laughs> <laughs> so and all the people that, that came to us with this question uh, really wasn't people we would like to talk with yeah, it was ordinary people. Ordinary people that, that just knew that few English words and want to <laughs> share that, that knowledge with us. And they were curious too, for sure. Yeah. But the people we would <clears throat> like to meet, they didn't spoke English. Yes. So that's, that's a complete different approach that with your help, Mr. Gangadas, I'm so thankful for that. With your My help, pleasure. I could, I could uh, over, overcome. Uh, overcome. overcome. Um, so this was a really special trip of uh, 45 years from that <laughs> time that you can speak so many languages, local language, and uh, yes. apart of that, your knowledge of India is so deep that uh, that really helped helping me to see the country in a whole different way. Yeah, I think uh, the difference is uh, from the 1978 when we were just a tourist and we were just on the surface of India meeting people. We are mostly staying in hotel, dharmashala, traveling like tourists. Now, because I have been in India for more than 40 years, so we enter more inside the family and we see the more deeply the culture. Yeah. And this is yeah. something which is uh, very appealing to people, I guess. Yeah. So in this sense, so much to say, so much to say. And, uh, and, uh, but I remember also after six months of stay in India at that time, we had a kind of tour that, that wasn't quite tourist one. Of course. We went to Rajasthan and Punjab in a, in a way that where most tourists weren't there, <laughs> didn't know. No. We were more so, pilgrims, I would say. Let's say that, let's say that. And what I think is that from that time we were, as you said, pilgrims, but pilgrims, they do have a, a goal. They do, they do start with the already set up goal. We, at the time, we didn't have that goal. What our goal was looking for something deeper, something more real than what we were experiencing in our uh, daily Roman life. <laughs> You can say we were the seeker of the truth in some that's, way. That's an appropriate uh, description. 
Okay, would you like to tell us also about your personal life? How you, when you are in Rome, how you spend your time with your wife, who's also an accomplished musician, piano teacher, yeah. and your son, who's an accomplished <laughs> dancer. <laughs> oh, yeah. So your family, they've been engulfed into such a wonderful uh, journey <laughs> of art. So. Yeah, art is there for sure. Art is there since my 20s. Art remains so present in my life and in my head. It's, it's became a, a job. I'm very lucky as my job now is teaching in the conservatory that it takes me one day a week. This means one day I go there with my students and I teach them mandolin and um, classical in classical music for sure. And the other time of my of my week of my daily is d d devoted to study. As <laughs> if I won't really be a good teacher, I must still study a lot. As uh, there's so many things in the music field, not just the performance aspect. I want to help them to become better musician. That's the difference in between a, a normal instrumental player, let's say a mandolin, a guitar, a violin player. You know how to play your instrument, how to uh, express yourself through that, but to be a musician to me means something else, really to go deep into yourself, to find what your sensitivity is uh, about music. I think also you are, from what I understand and seeing you in the last few years, is that you are helping people to become better people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you give also advice on the personal level to people to overcome You know, some stumbling blocks say that somebody say, oh, I can never play like this. It's very difficult. I, I, you know, <laughs> people get stuck into that mentality of thinking I'm not capable, but I'm mm -hmm. seeing you preparing people and guiding them to overcome those difficulties. Am I correct? Yeah, yes. What I, uh, what I can say about myself uh, is that uh, I think I'm a good teacher as a, uh, as I can see people where they are at the moment they come to my studio or my school, the conservator. And so the question is, where do you want to go? So if you, sometimes they think they want to go somewhere, but they don't really know. Maybe they look at the, some mandolin play on the internet or the live show, of a live performance and say, oh, I want to do like that. I want to really want to play that music. And, but then little by little, little mandolin is a, a curious instrument. As I said before, it's present in the old world culture, means there's a, an American mandolin, maybe it's well known for its bluegrass or jazz uh, approach, and, but there's a Brazilian mandolin too that is amazing with its rhythmic feel and, and pulse and so on. And there is a Baroque mandolin that is a completely different instrument. And there's contemporary music for mandolin. So much of this music is coming, can you say, from Japan? <laughs> And so yes. there are very good composers over there. So there are many mandolins. You just let, that's why I'm try, I try to bring, take uh, students to music. Music comes first, then comes the instrument. The best thing is to do the, the, the music that is uh, taught with the instrument Uh, on the appropriate instrument. So music that it was taught for the mandolin uh, to play with for the mandolin. Uh, I would like to ask you this question because uh, in Madhavacharya, in our Sampradaya, he says that if you learn to play the Vina, you will become self-realized. Mm -hmm. So what my, uh, my experience, a little bit of experience of music and bhajan and kirtan, is that music expresses the feeling of the heart or the soul. But uh, I want to say that uh, is also a journey of a spiritual enlightenment for you? Depends on your approach to the okay. music. 
to me, it really was, yes. <laughs> to my experience. As what I found on playing music is the, the problem is not the mandolin. The problem is who is behind the mandolin. <laughs> the problem is not the music. Uh, and there are also different kinds of music. Let's say what I mostly do is classical music. This means that it's completely already composed. So... There is not such a big space for improvisation. There's no space for improvisation at all. But other kind of music that has improvising aspects like jazz or, or, or blues with the mandolin too, or Brazilian music too, as I said, they have an improvising part that requires, that takes your approach, your feeling. And then the research you do as you sit there with your mandolin and for sure with your instrument in general it's not just a matter of mandolin when you sit there alone with your instrument what are you looking for what i suggest to my students is that yes the the piece of sheet in front of you is just a, a, a medium a medium to discover something more of yourself then someone stops at the, the, the music, the, mm. the little dots on the paper. <laughs> but as Mozart said, music is what happened in between the notes. Wow, that's a good, uh, good statement. Of, yeah, Mozart uh, <laughs> is Mozart. not mine. Eh? Yeah, it was not <laughs> anybody. So another thing I want to say is that because in our understanding there is Sambanda, Abide and Prayojana, which is applicable to all different paths of spiritual material. Sambanda means relationship. Abhidhya means the system by which you want to achieve something. And Abhidhya means the ultimate goal. So whether you're working on a material platform, musical platform, or spiritual platform, this has to be very clear in your mind. What is my relationship, for example, with the mandolin or with music? Mm. Or what is my relationship with the Supreme? What is my relationship with nature? What is my relationship with other living entity? And what is the system for me? What is the goal is that, okay, I want to become spiritual and enlightened, or I want to achieve Oof. something to be a great musician, hmm. or I want to become an accomplished uh, mandolin player. So what is the system? So these three aspects I would like you to mm -hmm. explore. Mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, so this requires... Uh, a long, a long lesson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but cut it short, short cut it short. short, yes, cut it short is that nowadays is, is really a completely different approach to music and let me say to art in general, to my view. As uh, in the past, I mean the past century, I can tell this from European point of view, uh, in the past century, the students, they used to live with the master, mm. with the teacher. So this, this uh, was an approach completely different. Maybe at the beginning you just uh, clean the, the brushes of the paint, the master painter, yes. just clean them and yes. you don't even allow to touch any, any of them, just clean the floor. And <laughs> you were and an apprentice. You were an apprentice. That's it, that's it. And um, now is complete, for sure, something impossible. To. Then I want to tell you this. In the past, the, the artist must go on through seven, seven uh, points of study. Three were in the language field and four were in the uh, science field. Mm -hmm. So music was one of the four in the science field. Wow. And uh, I think as m music was in the science field, there were uh, arith arithmetic, means the number, uh, geometry, means the number in the space, then music, there is number in space and time, and astronomy. Mm. So. This is, was the ancient time approach in the European culture. Mm. 
So music, if you are a musician, this doesn't mean you only know how to play your instrument. You know how to compose for that and for many other instruments. You are a singer, you are a keyboard player. You are, you are an artist in the whole sense in right. the past time, but nowadays is completely a different approach. Okay, who are some famous musicians that you... Uh, feel like they have done a great contribution to the music world in the today's and last hundred years. I don't know, Jimi Hendrix, whatever, <laughs> but you can say whatever you want. Well, we, we are lucky to have this, this, uh, this help from the past that, that the written tradition of Western music uh, give us, uh, give us uh, let's say, the music of Mozart or Bach or, or Vivaldi or Monteverdi. Uh, there are two composers in Western music I would like to recall that are not the world famous, but maybe, maybe they are, <laughs> for sure. I think, to my opinion, they just turn the page. What I mean, there is the great book of music and every composer that comes write down a line into that book. Then yeah. at a certain point, the page is over. Someone write the line and has to turn the page <laughs> <laughs> and something different. Got it? Yes. So, to my opinion, one person that did that page turn was Claudio Monteverdi. This beginning of 17th century. Okay. Wow. Is not one of the world uh, renew, but right. well known between musicians. Okay. Another one is Claude Debussy, Debussy. Uh, the French yeah, the one French. at the end, uh, beginning of 20th century. So they really turned the page of Western classical music, but th that's not the world <laughs> world music. But what about the contemporary people of our on our time in the last uh, 50 years? Our let's say. time is very tough, I think. That's no, we saw my m most wonderful, uh, okay. you know, we saw from Friends Zappa to Pink <laughs> Floyd, and uh, okay. we saw the Grateful okay. Dead. And you told the name, you told the name, yeah, Friends Zappa. Friends Zappa, let me say, is a, is a, is a he was, he was a man that overcome all the barriers he went through all the barriers he, he was composing uh, rock music just to pay the band the, the full band that could play uh, his composition for a uh, whole brass band at the time where we had no computers right. so when then when computer music arrived he was one of the first to write down and to use that computer to compose his contemporary music mm -hmm. so he was a classical musician as well he was he really was but they had fun to play he always says in his song we are all in we here just for the money <laughs> we're all in that for the money so and for having so, fun. In, let's say, what is your relationship with money? Because nowadays all the musicians or all the artists, they look also in that aspect, like, okay, I need to make so much money or I will take this contract, I will play here unless they pay me this, I won't play. I don't know, what's your <laughs> feel about this? Yeah. Art was becoming um, manipulated by... What I, what I say is the art the, in, in the past time or you very, very rich, this means the amateur. Amateur is one that there's so many uh, wealthy, wealthy people that can devote their time to painting, writing poetry, uh, sculpting, or making music just for improving their quality life. Otherwise, you're a very poor guy. You are sent to the conservatory to study, to play an instrument 10 hours a day. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, you can go to play in a church or a service of some prince and so on. Mm -hmm. So what I tell to my students, if, if you came here, don't expect to become rich. Right. <laughs> and uh, in but, our but you'll become really satisfied if you yeah. if you go sincerely to the music. I think in our Vedic time we have a great uh, example of people who were sponsored by the kings. The kings were very pious and very noble, so they used to sponsor all the musicians, the artists, because the artists by themselves. 
They cannot market themselves mm. and make money. It's not mm. so easy for them. For some of them, it is few. Mm-hmm. But many of them, they don't know how to mm-hmm. market themselves. Therefore, they were oh, sponsored. This is a good point. As I Again, I must talk about Western music for sure. sure. I don't know so much about India music history. So about Western music, the point is that the music we have from the past just came from two main places. I mean, the court where kings or prince or noble people, wealthy people were paying people to stay at the court as they had no radio, no TV, nothing mm-hmm. else, but they want to enjoy music. So it was an entertainment. So, y- yes and no. The entertainment, but also, but also through the entertainment, through the... Uh, uh, a picture, a painting is not an entertainment. That sent you a message. Mm-hmm. The same was for music. Was not an entertainment. Was some music was, but mostly they sent message. Thank so you. we had music from the court and music from the church. And the point, the missing point, that the music was done by the people for themselves. We don't have it anymore. Wow. Okay, I want to ask a different question now. Well, for example, what, what would be for you an understanding? What is the message of this modern music, which I don't understand because uh, I'm getting old, maybe, but uh, let's say there is, uh, there is uh, you know, Metallica, or there is uh, this computer music, there is New Age music. Mm. So what's this, what is the message into this? Is there any message at all, or is it just garbage, or it just, I don't know, what, what would you classify as? Oh, so much to say is the, 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 now the musical world has become uh, uh, affordable to, to, to everyone. Yes. So you can just buy a guitar for or any instrument for a few dollars, buy, not even buy anything, just <laughs> with your smartphone. You can <laughs> have apps to record it professionally. Uh, I want to not say what, if you have a computer and a microphone, you can do even Amazing a professional stuff. recording yes, all yourself. alone in your studio. So your this spread out the, the world of music to to a huge amount of... But still, what is the message this music gives today? To the youth, for example. (laughs) So this great quantity, Mm -hmm. to my opinion, make the quantity, the quality, very low. Very low. So we have big quantity, very low quality in every field. In every field. So that's why I think you should say this Kali Yuga, you call like that? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, Kaliuga. <laughs> but for example, somebody said that they changed the note from 732 to, you know, they remember we were. 432? Uh, yeah, 432 to 444. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, what, what, yeah, what is that about? Yeah, because yeah. something intriguing to yeah, some people yeah. who are musicians say, oh, why did they change the scale of the sound, the music? Is, is there a subtle message behind? Is it demoniac? Or is it futuristic? Yeah, what is what that? happened? What happened uh, is that during the, the Second World War, the Nazi in Berlin they moved the diapason means the fixed the fixed note the bell the starting note that is an A in English La in uh, Italian. Latin is from uh, uh, forty three to hertz. To 44 hertz. This raised the pitch. Okay, why did they did that? Some say that was to re- increase the um, the what passion, the, the passion, 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 yeah, yeah and uh, so the greed, passion, uh, in this sense. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. But what I know that in the past centuries, the the um, Diapason, so is called the, the height of the earth of the note A, changed many times. So it was even higher than 440. Uh, sometimes in the, in, the, in the theater, they used to have lower pitch so the singer could sing either wow. note at this. But in the, in the church, they like higher pitch too. Mm. So it's very difficult to answer this question. 
I suggest you experience really yourself as mm -hmm. you have so many uh, oh, in this <laughs> YouTube or something like yes, that yes, will yes. help us on our research. So experience yourself if you are experiencing differences in between the same music played in two different diapason. Eight. I don't know. It's difficult in India because there's so much sound everywhere and uh, <laughs> even in the night sometimes the cricket doesn't let you sleep because uh, it goes beep, 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 like beep, and the bird night. in the morning and the sound of the tractor in the back <laughs> and the people shouting and the kirtan. Okay, let me jump into another almost final of our time. It's getting over and uh, you have been for the last 10 days in Mayapur, so what is the most uh, wonderful thing you experienced in Mayapur, apart from taking bath in the Ganges, oh, or yeah. uh, eating pizza in our Goranga Pizzeria, <laughs> I don't know what, but let me... Well, well I, what I can tell you, I've, I've been in Mayapur exactly 20 years ago, 21 years ago, and uh, by the time was already a mystical place, <laughs> So I felt really a uh, uh, good play, good <laughs> as an old hippie, let me say, good vibrations. <laughs> uh, yes, here and in our deep too. I yes. really, I really felt this area is something special. Is this uh, traveling to India enhance your relationship with the Supreme? For sure, for sure, <laughs> with the depth part of myself and the higher part of this universe. I like we thank you so much for coming today to our uh, Radio Mayaport, which is a link to your heart. I hope when you go back to your Rome, Gensano, a beautiful place, you will tell your friends about our radio and let them listen whenever they want about some uh, wonderful music. I'd thank like you. to thank everybody thank to the you. listener and this is Ganga Das. From thank Mayapur you. Thank and you for Fabio and uh, Shu. Thank you for inviting me. It's really a good blessing. As, as you say, today's Ganges bath <laughs> was the, really the ending of uh, an amazing experience.